uh, still going over the starting lineup. Okay, um, and just bring us up to speed with where Luke is. I know you guys are happy that it could have been worse than it, it was. It could have been a lot worse, but it's going to be a few weeks, uh, at least a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and then with with cancer, is that part of what you're considering right now, or are you putting him? Yeah, considering. This is a lot of considerations. The team we're playing against tonight, uh, the dynamic style of play that they play, um, you know, again, trying to keep our young guys in a place that they can stay comfortable and continue to grow. Uh, a lot of decisions and things that we look at are, are weighing into that. Okay. Um, with Harden, I mean, obviously he's, he's such a force in this league. You know, just your thoughts on his level of play right now and also how you use him as an example with the young guys in terms of what they can, the development piece. Well, like I said earlier today, <clears throat> I got a lot of respect for Giants because, um, you know, initially coming out of Arizona State, he wasn't the guy that everybody was just like, oh my God, you know. And uh, I had a buddy that was his assistant coach in college, and he said, this kid has got a real chance and uh, he continues to grow. And, you know, I faced him in the finals when he was with OKC, and now I faced him in a, in a whole other capacity and just to see the evolution of him as a player and a young man uh, has been impressive. And uh, he is exactly what you just said, he's a force. Yep. Um, with Trier, Coach, over the last two games, he's, he's built some momentum here. I know you've run some stuff for him specifically to get him involved. What yeah. have you seen? I think it was more more than anything. It's the same thing that anybody goes through, uh, <coughs> you know, especially the first time a young guy goes through a, a real amount of time being out or a real injury. Um, when they come back, it's a conditioning rhythm. You know, when they left the game, they didn't really understand it. So they're coming back to something that you know, after being uh, you know hurt and they lose a little bit of conditioning, that you know, you just hope that they see the game from a different perspective when they're sitting out. And uh, you know, I'm, I am happy with the way that he's gone about it, especially the last two games and his productivity. Obviously, this is the first year that the NBA is doing their lottery changes with how they're doing the draft lottery. Um, and it was done to deter um, losing purposely. Do yeah. you think that that was a necessary step, and do you think it's serving its purpose? No, I think it's a good thing. Okay. I really do. I think uh, I don't think anybody should just be trying to lose. Um, but you always have to take your circumstances. And, you know, that's what we're doing right now. Our circumstances, we have the youngest team in the NBA and a big part of our future and how good we're going to be later has to do with a couple, a 19 year old, a couple 20 year olds and some 22, 23 year olds. And so, um, you know, people can describe that however they want, um, but that's just a matter of fact that where we are and we have to get better with those guys. And, and my guys come out every night to compete to win. I don't give a damn what anybody says about that. I know these guys come to work, and I know they come to win. Are they ready to win every night? No. But, uh, you know, I know one thing. We're coming out to do it every night. And so however people want to talk about that, that's on them. But I know what my guys are about. How much do you want to see out of Kevin tonight, and how important is it to get off a fast start? Yeah, we're going to, you know, we obviously want to get him going. Uh, I feel like the last couple of games he's been deferring a little bit and just trying to, like, let everybody get involved in the game. And I've just been encouraging him to be aggressive and, and just go after it right out the gate. Uh, usually when he gets off the good starts, that helps us. How many minutes do you think could Mitchell give you at this point? I don't know, yeah. They, like I said, I these, these young dudes... They come back from injury, it's different, you know. As you monitor a 33-year-old coming back from an injury compared to a 20-year-old, I don't know. You know, uh, you know, it's minutes during the game early on. Like last game, it was minutes where he looked like he was just like physically spent. And then in the second half, he played the same amount of minutes, but in that same minute where he went, where he lost it, he had a big block and a dunk in the second half. So. Trying to weigh it is very difficult with them right now. It's just trying to get to know them and what's the threshold. At the end of the day, I just gotta keep putting them out there and let them just deal with it without getting them hurt. 
uh, where I push anything that's sensitive to a place that uh, he can get hurt. Coach, right when you first got hired through the preseason and the trade camp, trying to get you know, a little more aggressive with something you're talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, he has his moments. He goes back and forth. I think it's just a matter of creating habit. You know, when you've been something where you've been someone who's distributed and deferred for a long time, trying to get somebody to the place where they are ultra aggressive, um, you know, that doesn't happen overnight. It, it just doesn't. That that switch doesn't happen overnight. Um, and you know, again with him. I'm still saying the same thing. I'm, I'm, everybody's not built that way. Everybody's not made to be that player. Go around the NBA at every team. Not every team's, every single player on their roster is an aggressive scorer, go out and get it, you know. Uh, some of those guys have to be role players and glue, glide, uh, glue guys and guys that help the team win in ways uh, other than putting in 30 points a game or, or having 15 assists. So. I still see that in Frank, that he's just a guy that does a lot of different things to help you win. And, you know, if he gets to a place where he starts throwing in the 20 at night, hey, I'll take it. But otherwise, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to let him grow into the player he's going to be while developing all of his skill sets. Do you think that's something a player has in his DNA or doesn't? Like, can you coach that into somebody? I've seen it too. I've seen it go both ways. I've seen some guys that, you know, you necessarily early on say, oh, they weren't very aggressive or whatever, but all of a sudden they turned into like, Wow, who is this guy? Um, and I've just seen guys that that is who they are. And so we're going to go with it. We're going to keep, like I said, we're going to push him every day. No one's in there working on their game harder than him. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep putting him in situations to be successful. And, you know, ultimately the, the kid will tell me who he's going to be. Do you, do you want to see him on <coughs> James Harden last night? Oh, for sure. Why not? Yes. Do you have a lot of guys in mind to, uh, I think I'll hold the tape. Great question, bro. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> is going to guard James Harden tonight. Uh, if you see me in the stands in my suit, you're going to know. <laughs> Are you guys going to go like boxing one? Or? I don't think we're ready for that yet. <laughs> but you try to get confident. Yeah. We're still trying to figure out our basic. <laughs> you know, we, we got a basic defense we're still trying to figure out. I don't think we're ready to like go boxing one or anything. But uh, I just know that our guys will come out and play really hard against them and compete and try to execute the game plan we put forth. I was saying the other day that he loved playing against like Westbrook the other night. Yeah. Um, do you see that aggressiveness or that different level when he plays? He's a competitor, man, and he, and he puts. That's why I say I always tell these guys like, you know, despite records and all of that, you know, they deserve it as much as anybody because they're investing as much as anybody. I've been around a lot of teams, a lot of winners, losers, the whole deal. This is one of the hardest working teams I've ever been around, and. So when it comes to deserving and that type of thing, these guys deserve it as much as anybody. But this league is just very unforgiving. The talent does not give it away that easy. They tease you with it. They let you play with them, but you have to ultimately take it from them. Uh, and so that's what these guys are learning right now is the pain of that. You know, and you have to understand how to uh, not only push yourself to a place where you're in the game, but how you can take a game. Coach, what's the most difficult part about defending James, is it the outside shooting, or is it him driving to the basket? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Hey, Berman, you belling? <laughs> <laughs> Being Tony, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> messed up. But uh, to answer your question, I, I mean, this guy is—he is a great basketball player, um, and I don't—I can't tell you exactly uh, that formula. All I know is it takes five guys to really try to impact him. Uh, and, and you can't, the thing that he's great at is he, he moves the ball. Um, he's a top assist guy. He's a guy that, that makes plays for his teammates. And so uh, you can't just take him out. You got to also be aware and respect uh, the guys around him. Great, thanks, All right, guys. Thank you.